Okay, so we had the 1,000th episode of Raw. All in all, not bad. But I really do dread next week's episode. I really, really, really do. The opening sequence with Vince McMahon coming out, and then doing a light spiel, and then DX coming out. Shawn Michaels and H. And X-Pac. And Road Dog. And a band, Beep, Billy Gunn. They all came out. That opening segment was done beautifully well. Damien Sandow came out, took, you know, Sweet Chimmy's got a pedigree. You know, they did a really solid job with that. A lot of them did look kind of rough, except, you know, you know, Billy Gunn. Still in pretty good shape. The only time they really showed DX beyond that was in a backstage segment where they were reenacting when an old, old Raw episode, back when there was the idea that Triple H was cheating on Stephanie with Trish Stratus, H was showing Trish a wrestling hold, and she, she bent straight down because it was a hammer lock. They reversed it this time where Trish Stratus was trying to show Triple H how to do some yoga. Not a bad DVD set. Well, just one disc. Yes, I own this in DDP yoga. <clears throat> And then they came in, so he got eight bent over, and he's like, oh, God, it's really tight. And then there's Trish Stratus, you know, defiantly behind him. So they make, of course, you know, some some backdoor jokes. So all in all, not bad. And that led to a very bizarre moment where X-Pac was like, see, Trish, how you doing? It's just, it just seemed really bizarre. Another one of the segments, of course, was the the wedding. And the person residing over that was Slick. If you don't recall Slick, he was really, really huge in the 80s. He was. So Daniel Bryan and AJ go through their relatively quick sort of ceremony. And then AJ says yes to getting married to Daniel Bryan. But she doesn't say yes to Daniel Bryan. Suggest to a different proposal from Vince McMahon. AJ is now the general manager of Raw. Total loss for words. Which then led to CM Punk coming down and kind of chiding him a little bit. Which then led to The Rock coming down. The Rock is going to challenge the WWE Champion at the Royal Rumble. So in about six months, The Rock will face somebody for the WWE Championship. Okay, not bad. He Slater continued his match against Legends. This Legend, of course, was Lita. Who looks really good, I'll be honest. You, know, you can tell that out of all the people who quit wrestling, some of the Divas really stayed in some really fantastic shape. Of course, it was a no count out, no DQ match. She then goes, oh, I didn't come alone. She hired some protection. Yes, the APA comes down. Both Bradshaw and Farouk. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Slater tries to hightail it. No. All the other legends come down. Twist of Fate, Super Sif Clothesline from Hell, Moonsault, 1-2-3. There you go. And ironically, that was the only diva to get involved in a match. It was Lita. Former diva. There was no divas match at all. But that was kind of it for like, you know, the actual, you know, big larger segments. There were a couple of small ones that were kind of just, look, hacks on Jim Duggan's here, or look, so and so's here. They kind of just, you know, sprinkle in some additional people. Which was okay. Lots of guest ring announcers. So, you know, not bad for doing that. Of course, uh, no Austin, no Batista. Beyond that, lots of other people, of course, were shown. So I'm getting some of the matches. We had a six-man tag match. That was Mysterio and Sin Cara. So, ironically, when they tag in Sin Cara, they don't dim the lights to that weird, like, yellowish color. And Sheamus took on Ziggler, Jericho, who he's feuding with, and Alberto Del Rio. Decent sort of match. 
the ending, of course, came when Jericho was going for a springboard dropkick. He got hit in the he, hit in the head by Jericho. By uh, sorry, Jericho hit in the head by Ziggler. Yes, Jericho attacked Jericho. That's how awesome he is. He can interrupt his own moves. And then Sheamus' big bro kick. Not a bad match. Just really felt like it didn't have a whole lot going on. Jack Swagger continued his meteoric descent as he got squashed by Brutus Clay. I, I mean, what, what are you going to do? Were there other matches? Kane was going to be assaulted by six guys. Uh, Jinder Mahal, Hawkins, Rex, Huniko, Camacho, Drew McIntyre. And then Taker came down. Taker still with the, the, the pseudo Mohawk. Then pretty much laid out, you know, those six guys. Stereo Choke Slam, Stereo Tombstones. It's good. I don't know if they're going to tag team more often or not, but, you know, decent. Triple H called out Brock Lesnar again, or Brock Lesnar. Heyman came down. Heyman kind of chided him a little bit back and forth. Made a couple of comments about his kids. And Steph came down. When she came down, I'll be honest, it's kind of like, wow. She is in better shape than the majority of the divas. I mean, I've seen, you know, images of her where she's, you know, really jumped in, like, head first into, like, severe physical fitness, but, yeah. She was probably the most impressive-looking diva in quite some time, except for, like, when Trish and Lena were there, because though they're also in phenomenal shape now, too. And she gets Heyman to, it, to agree so Triple H could not break Heyman. Stephanie broke Heyman. Lesnar comes down. Lesnar and H, nice, decent brawl. You know, stiff, vicious. H knocks him out of the ring. And you can tell that, you know, when Lesnar fought Cena, you can tell he had some off time. He wasn't as... You see him now, he's cut. He is jacked. <clears throat> Christian took on The Miz with the IC title on the, on the line. Especially if the announcer was, ironically enough, Bret the Hitman Hart. Christian loses, Miz your new IC champion. All right, pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. Now down to the main event. Punk Cena. I, no, I do have to do another, another cheap plug. <clears throat> If you happen to live in the Chicago land area, August 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, WizCon. Now you might notice the first two people up there. John Cena, I believe, there is Thursday evening. CM Punk is there Saturday from, I want to say, 2 to 6. Stanley's there too. So if you're in the Chicago land area and you want to see CM Punk or John Cena, that there is the opportunity to. Bear in mind, you'll be in a huge line. So those two finally got to have their feud. Decent match. Of course, there's a ref bump. But I've noticed lots of people made made appearance, except for Show. So Show comes down, hits a big KO punch on John Cena. Punk kind of has that, mm, do I want to get a dirty victory like this? Do I want to not? Do I wanna... Really good back and forth. Finally gets a ref in the ring, goes for the three count, Cena of course kicks out. Then of course Cena reverses into the SDF, Show comes back down, Show attacks Cena, so John Cena wins via DQ, but Punk is still champion. Show is just laying out John Cena, Rock comes down, Rock lays out Show. You see Rock going for the people's elbow. He gets cut off by Punk. GTS by Punk on the Rock. So how does the 1,000th episode of Raw go off the air? Cena down. Rock down. 
Punk standing triumphant. Ironically, beyond discussing touts, which I really don't care for, I don't care for the Twitter and YouTube hybrid master child thing. I really don't. If I really want to see what fans were actually were concerned with, there's this thing called YouTube that I would probably actually go to. I really don't want to see what people are thinking about as they're watching the show. I really don't. No. I watch wrestling for wrestling. I watch fan commentaries and shoots and TV tracks and all those sorts of things separate from watching wrestling. You know, they might as well never makes a mistake, make a, make a Boxer Mania reference. Throw Matthew's name in there. You might as well have a tout in one corner, a Twitter scrawl, this section here be for wrestling, here to be, you know, a tout, double Twitter scrawl. Make it seem like I'm watching CNN or Fox News. You know, have the ring be as small as possible, just throw a bunch of random crap in there too. So, all in all, not a bad Raw, very good light on matches, had a lot of other sort of things going on, but it made sense. Thousand awesome sort of Raw, you know, made this stuff big and important. I am entirely fearful of what we're going to see for next week's Raw, because you won't have this huge DX reusion, you won't have, you know, the, the wedding, which was decent for some filler, you won't have, you know, a, a really solid main event, you won't have The Rock, you won't have a lot of people who showed up just for this one night. So, a really solid episode of Raw, because from the, the, the whole nostalgia perspective, very light on matches. The promo segments were actually really solid, which was good, except for when Daniel Bryan said he would beat up Charlie Sheen. I could care less about Charlie Sheen. Period. But not bad, good from a nostalgia standpoint. I am desperately, desperately not looking forward to seeing what three hours of Raw with AJ at the helm is going to be like. Maybe we'll see Divas matches. Who knows?